Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video I'm going to talk about using a uh, disc on a chip uh, as a device driver. So this is my setup, my V40 card with a standard BIOS uh, boots from the USB drive for my project. And you can see I've got the disc on a chip right here uh, plugged in and 64K of memory. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the PC here and uh, boot it up. Let's get this in focus. So you've seen the VGA BIOS, and now we're looking at the, the uh, USB BIOS, and now we're going through the test in the system. Okay, we're starting MS-DOS. Now, I've already got it in there, so uh, it's it's already working as a device driver. Um, so let me just demo how I went ahead and set up my disk on chip first. So the utilities, which were downloaded... Uh, I'll put a link in the description. So you're going to start out here, and this this one actually um, does have a file system on them, but I'm going to completely destroy it. So in here you've got uh, your tools, and we're going to use D format. And we don't care what drive number it is, we just care about the address and memory. So I don't know why it doesn't say DOS in memory, but Win, I guess. I mean, these probably came out when Windows was more popular. So, and then we want to unformat. And what this will do is completely erase your chip and any uh, boot sectors or anything on there. Okay, now we can do the same thing, deformat, and this time we want to do our, now you can do this two ways. One, you can do it without, um, should be able to hit enter, I don't want to go ahead and try it because I, I don't want to do it this way, and if you hit enter now, it will not put any firmware on the chip, so it'll be non-bootable, uh, like uh, it won't load its own device driver. And I, I want this one to be set up for for both uh, as a, a device driver, but also bootable with its own firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and add the firmware. If, if you don't do it now, you really can't add it later. There is supposed to be an option to leave it blank, a blank section, but I haven't figured it out yet. And it just it's easy enough just to put it on. It doesn't seem to hurt anything to have it there. So it's going to take a minute. I'll probably maybe splice the video or something, cut this section out. It takes about a minute and a half. So you can see it says boot image is 48 kilobytes. Uh, if we had done this without specifying a file, it would say zero kilobytes. Um, like I say, what, what I want to be able to do is use my modified BIOS that does not use the USB and boot this. So I want to have it as its own standalone device. I say it takes a minute. So I don't know if I'm going to splice this out or not. You'll just have to skip ahead if you don't want to wait the minute and a half or whatever this is going to take.
Okay, here we go. So if you're skipping ahead, this is where you want to pick up again. So like all this is doing is installing the, the bootloader and uh, formatting the remaining part of the uh, flash ROM or whatever it is that's in there to be a seven uh, megabyte drive. All right, there we go. Now, we should be able to ah, put that sticky key again. Let's go ahead and edit our uh, config dot sys. Now, as you can see, this is our path to our utilities here, disk 8086. And this is what's in my config.sys. So device, got the path, disk 8086, uh, DOC, so disk on chip 2, ss.com, uh, that's a socket driver. And then the disk on chip, DOC 2, tffs.com, and then forward slash drive D. And that'll mount it as drive D in DOS. So, uh, no need to save it there. We'll just hit control alt delete. And this time you're going to see the disk on uh, chip driver load. Uh, this is unnecessary, completely unnecessary to do this. This is where I added the firmware to the chip. So if you did not do that forward slash S in the file name, you would not see that uh, that driver load there. But we're going to go ahead and continue. And you can see now it loads again, and it mounts it as drive D. That's looking for a mouse right now. No mouse. All right. So D colon. Um, I've noticed this is uh, it's a little slow, like compared to using the USB drive. So there you are. We are D drive. Uh, let's just make a directory. Let's call it uh, just new. So that we can look and you can see how many uh, bytes we have free. So from here, if you wanted to uh, copy DOS over and then uh, take a BIOS, I may make a uh, modified BIOS that does not use the USB drive. You'd be able to boot, and, and this is the quickest way to get all the files from the C drive into your disk on chip to the D drive. Uh, but yeah, you could use a modified BIOS that then does not boot the uh, USB, but boots the disk on chip as the primary. But you'd probably have to start with your uh, floppy drive so that you can set it as an active drive because DOS is seeing this as the second drive and it does not like to make the second drive active. Let's just look at F disk for a minute. See if FDisk even sees two drives in there. It should. I would think it should. No, actually it doesn't. So, yeah, you, you'd have to boot with a modified BIOS that ignores the USB and boot from a floppy to set the, the disk on chip as an active bootable drive, which is a piece of cake. Uh, it's just like any other hard drive. So, anyway, thanks for checking out my video today.